Evaluation for pneumothorax is performed uh, frequently after the FAST exam, but also uh, useful in the evaluation of undifferentiated shortness of breath. Um, and it's a fairly simple uh, exam and is primarily uh, directed to determining that there is normal lung sliding, uh, which, which is the evidence that the visceral and the parietal pleura are opposed, uh, creating um, a, a signal that can be identified by ultrasound. Um, the absence of lung sliding indicates a pneumothorax. The, uh, the exam uh, will, will use, uh, or can be used with almost any probe. Some people prefer a linear array high frequency probe. I personally find that a curved array general abdominal probe works very well. Um, the curve actually seems to emphasize the movement of the, of the, uh, of, of the pleura. And, uh, and it's also useful because at the completion of the FAST exam, um, one doesn't want to be uh, wasting time changing probes. So this general purpose probe will actually work very well. Uh, the exam consists of evaluation of the pleura from the clavicle to the diaphragm on each side and uh, uh, in the mid-clavicular line. And the way we identify uh, the visceral pleura is by placing the probe in a longitudinal direction, in other words, uh, at right angles to the ribs, uh, in this way. Now, you notice that our depth is, is relatively great here. Uh, and for this exam, adjustments of depth and adjustments of frequency need to be made. Usually after the, the, abdominal, the abdominal fast exam, uh, frequency is fairly low, so we're going to increase our frequency. Uh, we're going to adjust our depth so that we actually can move to a more superficial location because even in the most heavy set patients, the, the pleura in the thorax is less than five centimeters deep. We'll adjust our focus, bringing it to a superficial level, and we'll put the gain fairly low. And, and when, this, when this is done, all these things are done, it's, it's easy to see that there are ribs here. And as we go down across here, we see other rib shoulders coming in. Let me just put some ultrasound gel in the location where we're going to be scanning here. Um, ribs can be seen here, here, here. And the, the shadows very characteristically identify the rib. And the location that we're going to be looking at is immediately under the rib. Uh, and we're looking at this white line. And uh, it's important to locate this white line and distinguish it from all the other white lines here from the uh, intermus inter intermuscular scepter and also the reverberation artifacts behind the pleural line. Um, the pleural line is then evaluated for longitudinal motion. And if, whether or not the patient's identified, we should see pleural sliding here. Now, one of the key components of this technique is to have fingers, as you can see here, touching the patient's chest. And you know that you're doing a good job on this exam when you, when you look at the tissues right here, which are not moving with respiration, and see that they're absolutely still. These tissues are absolutely still, which allows our eye to really focus on the pleural line right along here, which shows the characteristic back and forth moment, uh, movement sorry, of uh, pleural sliding. And we check, you can see a little bit right here, you can see it here, and then we just check down each interspace one by one. You can see pleural sliding very nicely here, very nicely here. See the pleural sliding, keep going here. And right now we see the, 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 the uh, there's now through transmission of these structures, which indicates we've got over the liver and we're at the level of the diaphragm. So this is the very edge of the lung right here and the sliding right up to that point. We then check the other side, midclavicular line. Again, starting uh, perpendicular to the ribs. My gain's a little bit high here. I prefer to have less gain. Right here, uh, we can see reverberation artifacts caused by reflection of these various tissue planes up here. Uh, there are major reverberation artifacts down through here, uh, which will be present with or without pneumothorax. Uh, but here we can definitely see that there is Subtle pleural sliding. Again, my hand holding, holding very still so there's no movement here. Come down a rib space. Again, pleural sliding. And at this point on the left, we actually come into contact with the heart, which uh, 
for the inexperienced eyes might look like a leading edge sign, and it's one of the pitfalls uh, of this exam. And when we, when we reach the heart, we usually go into the anterior axillary line here to complete the exam. So we're seeing nice pleural sliding here in the anterior axillary line, another rib space here, the rib, rib, and shadow, shadow. Here's pleural sliding. Keep coming down here. And right here, we're seeing, again, the loss of the very reflective uh, pleural signature here when there's lung beneath it, and we're reaching the area here with transmission into solid organs of the abdomen down here with, uh, with bowel gas and so forth. Um, of note that uh, the peritoneum can also be seen sliding with respiratory variation, but this is now actually in a subdiaphragmatic area down here. That's the uh, completion of the pleural exam. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the, uh, the only thing to be added is that uh, if, if uh, still image documentation is required for this, it's possible to do that using M mode. So in viewing an area here where we see pleural sliding, we, we turn on the M mode function allow us and pass it right through this area where we're seeing the pleural sliding. And in that location with respiration, what we see is what we see is this area here shows uh, irregularity, um, sometimes called waves on a shore, this, these, these are supposed to indicate the waves coming down here towards the sandy shore. Um, and this, this irregularity here indicates that there is sliding and, and, and motion in this area, the pulmonary area. Um, when there's a, a pneumothorax, uh, this area here becomes extremely, each of these lines becomes continuous and uninterrupted uh, and, is, and is then called the stratosphere sign because you lose this irregularity in here associated with respiratory pattern. Uh, and that's uh, the documentation, the still image documentation of normal versus abnormal pneumothorax exam. And that completes the uh, evaluation for pneumothorax. Occasionally we have uh, uh, patients that, that are at risk for localized pneumothoraces, uh, patients who have chronic lung disease and possible scarring. And if you have a high index of suspicion, this exam can certainly be extended to the mid-axillary line or other parts of the chest to be absolutely sure that there are no local <coughs> or small pneumothoraces. But in most cases, this is sufficient.